How's it going folks? Nick here with the Tieta Permaculture Vlog. Coming here today to show you a little bit about my rainwater catchment here in my backyard on my homestead. Uh, this, this tank right here, this 275 gallon and about a thousand liter tank provides uh, my entire homestead with irrigation water, uh, water for the chickens, drinking water for the chickens, um, cleaning water for the various chicken tasks and, and garden duties and all that. All right here, all provided based on rainwater uh, for free here on my site. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna walk you through this system just so you get a little bit of better idea of how it functions and how you might be able to set one of these up yourself. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. First off, this is a IBC tank. This is a, a tank that's pretty much found globally, uh, worldwide. Uh, these are used to ship, uh, ship various types of liquids and chemicals and all that. So when you do find these, you do wanna be a little bit careful uh, if you're gonna be using it for water to make sure it's not something really toxic that's been in here. Um, but a lot of times there's like vinegar put in here, uh, you know, syrups and all that kind of stuff. That's what these things, that's what these things are made for. So um, it's pretty easy to find one that's actually, you know, food grade or at least been used with food safe things. This is plastic, so that's something to be aware of. But you know, just for, for basic irrigation water, this works a treat. Uh, I love it and uh, so far so good. Uh, I actually was able to purchase this cl close to me, but you can also find these for free depending on where you live or for pretty cheap. I think I got this one for about $120, um, which is not too bad for a tank that has its own little kind of protective system that I can use to help ground everything. Um, you can actually take the tank out of this, uh, this plastic or, or this metal frame if you wanted to. But for me, it's nice to have because it helps kind of ground everything right down to the ground and uh, uh, makes it nice and easy for me to work with. Oh, check it out. We got Otto here. He always comes and finds me when I'm doing my vlog, huh? Wanna come up here? Check it out. I don't think you've actually been up here yet. What do you think? Good boy. So let's go ahead and go through the entire system. We'll start with where the water comes in. We'll go through all the piping, all the drainages, all the flows, all the spigots, all that kind of stuff. Just so you guys get a really good idea of what this system is, how it's set up, and how you might be able to replicate it where you are, all right? So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and start with the, uh, with the inlet. Good boy. All right, the water starts its journey from the roof. Uh, and from the roof, we have these pipes that go right through the kind of roof structure here and drain. That one actually used to look like this right here or any of the other ones that kind of basically shoot the water straight out and uh, down into this main drainage I have here on the property uh, that runs through the, through the entire landscape. This is just something that's actually a, a city installed uh, drainage. So this is just something that's part of my site here. Uh, so yeah, here, this is where it usually would go, it would just flow down and go into there. So instead of that, I just cut it off, added a 90 degree elbow there, and then I'm able to take that water and uh, send it to where I want. So what I did first is it goes right through a leaf guard. Uh, this leaf guard basically takes all the debris that could be flowing in that water and just prevents it from getting into the tank, or at least prevents most of it from getting into the tank. It's actually self-cleaning, which is really cool. Uh, so you can see it actually has an angle to it. And so as the water flows, it's naturally pushing all the debris down and off, down and off every time as that water flows down. So it's really nice. It actually is pretty much self-cleaning. You can pull that little top part off, that tab off, um, and the entire screen comes off so you can wash it nice and easy. So it's a really cool system. You can see here, I actually have it, uh, I just used a, a fitting to connect it down into a two inch pipe here where I have another elbow. And from there, we're going to come straight across to the tank. Now, I plan at some point to add a little bit more support to this pipe, but currently it's working just fine as is. Uh, everything's really strong and over there, it's really connected to the wall. So I'm not really too concerned about that side. And obviously here it's connected to this inlet. So basically what happens is the water goes through the leaf guard to take away all the extra debris down over and across and it enters here. And from here, it falls straight down into the tank. So that's the, uh, that's the basic flow of the inlet, right? So a couple little things to note here. Uh, this cap here, this is the standard cap that comes with the IBC containers and actually it's already plumbed. Uh, it has a, basically an inlet there for, I believe it's two inch, uh, at least on mine, it was a two inch uh, thread, pipe thread, national pipe thread, MPT uh, opening there. So I actually could just screw right into that and immediately start adapting into PVC pipe, which is really useful. Um, and really handy because I had to get, didn't have to get any sort of extra adapter or anything like that. So do check if you have one of these tanks and you're not sure if you actually have that. There's a little bit of a tab on top of here and I just pulled that tab off and that revealed where that little opening was. So that was a really great thing I learned. So yeah, I basically added that right on in uh, and that's how the water, that's how I got all these adapters attached. So this is the inlet pipe, it comes in. 
Now something that's really important is you always need to have a vent, right? You always need to have a place for the air to escape as the water is filling. Otherwise you're gonna create a pressurized container uh, and that's gonna be very hard to actually fill with water. So what I have here is basically just a, uh, a sanitary elbow here. So that's gonna shoot everything down here and I have a T uh, or it's just really it's a sanitary T. Uh, and at this T part, I just have a, uh, a loose fitting. Um, this is just basically a, uh, an end cap here, a clean out pipe, a clean out cap. And uh, I just don't screw this all the way in to close it off. I just leave that nice and loose. And it's actually usually loose enough where I can just pull it straight off. But I just usually have one thread closed just so it has a little bit of tightness to it so it can just pop off randomly. So that's how the air can vent out. Just that little bit of air flow is really all you need. You don't need this to be open. You could if you really wanted to, um, or put some sort of screen over that to prevent uh, mosquitoes and stuff from coming in. That's kind of the key. You want to avoid mosquitoes and everything and other insects getting into your water tank. So that's why I have this closed. And that's why on this side of the system, we have that screen before the water enters. So mosquitoes can't get into this system. Really, really important, especially here in the tropics. So water goes down and in, into the tank here. So, and that basically fills the tank. Now, once this tank is full, it's already all the way up. What actually ends up happening is this right here is a little bit higher than this outlet. So this whole area actually gets uh, pretty much filled with air and creates a little bit of a vacuum and same with over there on the other side. So what ends up happening is the water ends up to about this line. And then as more water tries to come in when the, when the uh, tank's already full, actually backflows up and naturally takes the easiest path, which is right here. And over here, you can actually see I, I increase the size to a three inch pipe. Now that's just to make sure that I have, uh, you know, really, really easy drainage and flow. I don't want this to ever be blocked, especially if this tank is full. I don't want this to be kind of backed up in any sort of way. So this went immediately to a bigger pipe size so that if anything is kind of coming out here, it's never gonna be more than this pipe can handle. And it's definitely never gonna be more than this pipe can handle. So this is basically an, an oversized uh, fitting here just to be a little bit safe for my system. That comes on over here. And again, I have another sanitary tee, this time a three inch one. Same exact thing on the top here, really loose fitting. So I, can, I can't open that up and clean it out if I need to, but really this is just to help with venting. And then from there it goes down on the side of the tank. And I just have it literally tied onto the side of the tank here and, and zip tied in a few places just to kind of keep it stable. And then here at the bottom, this is the down, this is that drainage down pipe. I have another screen here just to again, prevent mosquitoes from getting up and into the system this way. So I actually have this screen and it's just attached there with a little bit of a, uh, uh, a hose clamp thing here right around the pipe itself, pipe clamp. Uh, so that goes there. And this is just a fitting to help me hold that in place. And then that goes down to another elbow and then a little 20, 20 degree elbow or whatever it is, 22 degrees, and then down into the drainage. So you notice before this pipe was plumbed and it, was, it came out and all the water fell straight on down and into this drain. Now the water just takes a little bit longer path, fills this tank and then comes back out and goes right back down into the same exact spot. So I haven't really changed the water flow on site at all. I just basically made it work for the system that I'm trying to install and use this specific location. So I'm not changing really the water flow. I'm just keeping the water here on site a little bit longer and then it continues down the way it would have gone anyway. Now, there may be local regulations that kind of either prevent you from doing this or have restrictions on this kind of thing. So keeping that in mind and trying to make sure that all your excess water always goes back into the same waterway it would have gone into, it's a really easy way to kind of help get, you not necessarily around those, but help make it a little bit easier to actually install a system like this if you live in those kind of places where they do have regulations about rainwater catchment or tanks or anything like that. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, really quick overview before we keep moving. The water comes off the roof, goes down through the leaf guard, comes across over. It can vent up here, otherwise it goes into the tank. When the tank fills all the way up, that water just comes right back out the same way it entered, goes over through this bigger tube and then down and into the drainage. And that's the natural water course. All right, so now we got the pot, the inlet and the overflows taken care of. This is really important to consider, especially if really heavy flows like I do here in the tropics. Uh, so that's just something you always want to keep in mind and always have a plan for what where the water goes when the system's full uh, or you have a major, major rain event. Uh, and you just want to make sure that your system is sized to handle that kind of event. Uh, one other thing I'll note about the, the pipe inlet here is uh, I'm only using one of my downspouts here and that's intentional. Again, I live in the, in the humid tropics in a tropical rainforest. So I have a lot of rain 
on a yearly basis and on a weekly basis. We have a lot of rain. So I could easily add another one of these downspouts and have it connect in here. Tank would fill faster. But as it is, if I have three inches of rain, uh, yeah, just three inches of rain, this entire tank is full just from that one downspout with that small little catchment area of that part of the roof, right? So I didn't want to overwhelm this system too much, but if at any point I need to add more catchment to make this tank fill faster, if I end up using this tank, this water faster than I uh, can gather the water, then I can certainly add more catchment area by including some of these other pipes in the drainage. So I could easily connect that and that pipe, send it over and have it all go down through that leaf guard and then over. So that's something we could do to improve the system in the future, but for now, I'm happy with it as is. All right, so now let's go to the outlets. At the bottom of this tank, all IBC tanks come with some sort of some sort of valve here to open and close the tank. That's just part of the system. They need to have that. And that's usually plumbed in some way. In this case, it's a two inch, uh, two inch pipe. So this basically is my on off switch. I can easily turn the entire water flow off to my entire system just by turning that. So that's really nice if you ever need to like, you know, isolate the tank or you, or you know you're not gonna be here for a while. You don't want water to be flowing or anything like that. You can always isolate it right there. So that's my first shutoff point. And then from right here, I have three more shutoff points. One is just a spigot. And this is just so I can have water anytime I need it. You can see that's a lot of flow just from the gravity of this tank right here. So that's pretty cool. I have that right there, easy to fill buckets from right there, easy to fill any sort of thing we need. Again, this is non-potable water uh, because I'm not trying to do anything to keep it clean in terms of a first flush diverter or a filtration system. This is non-potable water. I'm not trying to drink this water. If I were trying to drink this water, I would make sure that A, I had a little bit of an extra filtration system at the beginning of the system to kind of help get any sort of excess stuff from the roof off um, and kind of set it aside before I start collecting it. And then I would make sure that I run this water through a filter just to be safe. Uh, and again, this, this is not a potable rainwater system. This is just to rainwater for irrigation. Uh, the chickens seem to be just fine drinking it. I'm sure, honestly, I could drink it just fine. We have no problem at all. But, uh, you know, I, I do not. And I just say that clearly this is a non-potable system just to make sure everyone's safe and no one accidentally drinks something that they shouldn't be drinking. The rainwater itself is really, really clean. The roof, not so clean because this roof uh, has had lots of issues and it, it's just, it's been neglected, let's just say that. So this is in no way supposed to be potable rainwater. All right, so we got the spigot here. Uh, over here, I actually have it, I have everything plumbed to run through uh, uh, a line that runs through my entire backyard here. First step is right here, it has a little bit of a side cast here to go off into irrigation lines which is really cool. I have all my garden beds here run off of gravity fed irrigation that's run off of this timer. So I don't have to think about irrigation at all anymore, which is great. Anytime I have a, a T or anything like that, I always like to add a valve. So I have control over um, when water is actually accessing that area. That's always really just a good rule of thumb when you're doing uh, plumbing, plumbing things. Always add a T after a major intersection. You can see here, valve, valve, valve. And we have another valve at the beginning. Always good to have more control than less, right? So this valve right here actually runs all the way through the garden, down the slope ever so slightly. All right, from the other side, there's the tank. Here's that pipe I was just talking about. It keeps running, 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 all the way to here. It has a corner right here, comes on over, and ends up right here. Now I have this raised. This is still just below the uh, level of the, of the tank up there, the tank outlet, so I'm not gonna create any sort of weird uh, gravity flow issues here. But again, anytime I have an outlet, I have a control valve. That's always important. This right here is just a little bit of a filter to keep the, uh, the water, to filter out anything that's in that water before it goes into the irrigation lines, because I have this basically teed off here. So I want to make sure that both of them are filtered there. And then this one right here, this is just water that I can use for the chickens. And again, that's just gravity fed from that system there, which is really cool. And then right here I have a, uh, a timer and that's the timer for the bottom parts of my irrigation system. So just from this rainwater tank, I can irrigate my entire backyard garden area, which is really cool. All gravity fed, no pumps needed or anything like that. Uh, and then I can also have water directly to right next to my chickens for all the various chicken tasks, either for their drinking water or, uh, or for, for cleaning and all that, you know, all the regular stuff that comes with chickens and chicken maintenance. You always have something to clean, right? <laughs> So all that is run from this tank, which is really, really cool. Nice to have water that's always there for me, ready to go uh, pretty much in any event.
All right, we're back here and we're gonna talk about the last one now. So this is my drain valve. So if I ever need to empty this tank or if I'm expecting a really heavy rain and I just want to, uh, I just want to make sure that I have a little bit of extra room for the tank to fill, uh, or if I want to help clean out this whole drainage thing, if there's anything in it, I can actually put a whole bunch of water through here really, really fast by using this drain valve here. So I have just a basic uh, fitting here, a pipe with, the, with a little corner here, and that's just all kind of sized specifically for this. And I have it, I can just throw it in there anytime I need to, and it goes right down into the drain. And then if I open this up here, you can see I can drain water really, really fast. So anytime I need to drain water, I can. And I can uh, basically empty out this entire tank in a matter of minutes with that drain right there, because it's a two inch drain. And what's really nice is my drainage system here, you can see it flows that amount of water helps kind of clean it out. So anytime I'm gonna have a really big rain event, I'm actually able to just like flush this entire, uh, this entire drainage, just to help clear it on the way before we get those major rains. So again, nice little feature, always good to include draining systems <laughs> in your tanks, because you always wanna be able to have as much control over your tank as possible. So uh, the tank itself overflows for itself. Anytime it's about to be full, it goes through that upper part and down. If I need to drain it myself, I can quickly add that drain, that drain pipe on and uh, open up the valve. And I can also, if I wanted to, add more plumbing throughout the rest of the system from this point and just turn this on at all points. But for now, I just leave this little system. I just keep it in here. So anytime I need it, it's easy to grab and waiting for me to uh, drain if needed. All right, folks, so that's the system. Uh, again, this is all just using really, really basic uh, basic plumbing fittings and, and tanks that are available pretty much anywhere in the world to kind of create a system where you have uh, rainwater storage and, and usage at, at a moment's notice if you need it, uh, especially in climates where you have a lot of rain, plenty of rain throughout the year. Uh, this is an easy way just to have a little backup supply of water. That's really, really important here in, in Puerto Rico and in tropical areas where you have, you know, hurricanes or anything like that, or in a place where the water uh, supply is not that reliable. Again, here would be a pretty good example. We often lose water for various periods of time during the day. Um, it's usually on regularly, but we do have those random outages or low pressure times and all that. So it's really nice just to have a backup supply. Uh, and again, I could take this water and actually pump it up to a roof tank and use gravity fed water throughout the entire system if I wanted. This already does provide gravity fed water because it's at the highest point of the property. Uh, so that's why I placed it right here in this corner. First of all, it's closest to the downspout where I'm collecting water. But secondly, because this corner right here is the highest corner of this backyard. So any point below here is lower, which means I can gravity feed water throughout the entire property without needing to pay for any sort of pumping or anything like that. Uh, this entire tank is just supported on cinder blocks. I, I created a small little bench terrace just to help create a nice level platform. I made sure that I had adequate drainage to take all that excess water that's gonna ever collect from underneath here, maybe from the water flows from above. Uh, all that just kind of drains off nicely to the side here. So all this is nice and stable. Uh, I actually have this in sloped slightly. So this tank, while it looks level, it's actually just slightly off kilter. Um, and that's just so that if there's any sort of issue with this tank or it becomes unstable, it's not gonna fall into that drainage, it'll fall this way where there's much more land to catch it. So that's the only reason I kind of angle it that way. Um, but otherwise, this is just a, a basic uh, flat area to put, a, uh, put something important on, any sort of bench terrace or, or, or terrace cut or flat cut. And then I just uh, basically leveled these cinder blocks so that they were all level with each other. Then popped the tank on top and uh, started filling. So. This was a really fun project I did over the summer uh, when I had a little bit of extra time uh, to kind of dedicate to it uh, and also just to prepare for that hurricane season. We ended up not really needing it, but at this point I have automatic irrigation throughout the entire backyard. So that's a plus. Uh, it really minimizes my management time back here and allows me to focus less on watering the crops and more on maintaining the gardens, adding new systems, maintaining the existing systems to a better degree of uh, attention. So uh, yeah, something I really recommend rainwater catchment, rainwater storage, as much as you possibly can. Uh, a lot of these fittings, uh, parts of these fittings, I actually bought with Blue Barrel. And I have another video I just recorded that is actually uh, kind of detailing a Blue Barrel type system uh, using Blue Barrel Systems Supply, uh, their, their kind of supply stuff. I'm gonna link all that below and I'm gonna link right up here to the last video where I just uh, 
talked about that blue barrel system. If you don't want something quite as big as this, but you still have some space, you know, those blue kind of 50 gallon barrels, you can also do a very, very similar catchment system with those kind of barrels. And that's what I shared in that other video. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you do like this, please share uh, and please subscribe to the channel. That really helps me get the word out to more people, um, you know, throughout the world. And, and, and if you have anyone who's looking at doing a rainwater catchment system, please share this kind of video. These kind of basic setup things is something that I found pretty lacking. Uh, just basic, basic, this is how it works this is the system i found that lacking on youtube uh, so i just want to make sure i created that so that uh, you guys have something to refer to when you're getting your system set up so happy to answer questions if you leave them below and uh, otherwise thanks for watching